Recorded at Get a Grip Studios in Toronto, Canada. A Get a Grip management production and in association with the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Financially supported by the good folks at the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, this is Restoring Darkness podcast. This episode of Restoring Darkness is brought to you by Evluma. If you're serious about contributing to the reduction of light pollution, go to evluma.com, hover over products, and click on Dark Sky Friendly Lighting. Both the OmniMax and AreaMax lights are International Dark Sky Association certified. The warmer color temperatures of the OmniMax reduce the more easily scattered blue wavelengths, which contribute to glare and sky glow. With AreaMax lights, you get full cutoff, which also means no uplight and a significantly reduced contribution to sky glow. And all of Avluma's outdoor lighting product lines come with dimmable drivers for even more control. If your customer is looking for dark sky friendly fixtures with energy savings while still meeting the demands of decorative lighting, look no further than Evluma. Evluma, illuminating the pursuit of dark skies. Welcome back to the Restoring Darkness podcast. And I know that I'm waiting. There's a huge announcement coming out. I know everyone's excited about it, but I don't have it ready yet. So I have to wait another week. Well, we're going to come out with it real soon. But until then, we have Dr. Sheldon Pantovich of the Pacific Islands Coastal Program. Uh, she leads the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Pacific Islands Coastal Program, where she works with partners to find innovative ways to protect and restore island ecosystems. She grew up in the southeastern United States and started working on Pacific Islands in 1996. Her priorities are community-based restoration efforts, ecosystem restoration at a landscape sale, scale, and species translocations. When she's not working, she's surfing, mountain biking, or sport, dr- drinking giant cups of espresso. Um, there it is right there for all you watching the videos. Uh, website fws.gov slash program slash coastal. I know it seems like a lot, but you know all that stuff will be on the restoringdarkness.com website. So you can just click on that and go there real quick. But for right now, Dr. Plantovich, good to have you on the the um, uh, Restoring Darkness podcast. I was going to say another podcast that I do, but good to have you here. Um, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me. It's fun to be here already. I have a, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in a, a question that I, maybe you, you haven't asked and maybe I'm completely wrong about, but I have a feeling that darkness restoration and preservation is a rather new topic that has been emerging recently in your, in your work, in your field. Is that true? Yes, um, that is accurate. Um, here in the Hawaiian Islands, you know, we're a very isolated landmass in the middle of the Pacific. And because of that, like we had very few animals make it onto the islands and, um, you know, evolve into our native species. And so because of that, we're like missing these huge, you know, groups of animals. Like we don't have any, you know, mammals that can't fly or swim, for example. And so because of that, we have a very, very um, specific and Uh, vulnerable um, biota, like plants and animals. And so, you know, when humans arrived, of course, we brought with us all the things that we do, like mosquitoes and ants and Mm. mongooses and, you know, grazing ungulates. Sure. Yeah, cats. Yeah, you um, have a lot of those deer in Hawaii, don't you? Yeah, we've got all that stuff. And so my point being that um, we have our hands full with Um, these things that are causing our species to go extinct. Mm. And, you know, we've lost more than 50% of our native forest birds, mostly, you know, to either directly through invasive species or indirectly through um, diseases vectored by invasive species. And so it's kind of like a pants on fire situation in the Hawaiian islands. And so things like lighting tend to take a backseat to that, right? Because it's not causing like wholesale extinction of species, but it is, you know, chipping away potentially for species that are already past the tipping point. Mm. The, do you, do you think that, and, and, and I, and I, you know, I think we were making progress in the late nineties and two thousands with, with um, what they call dark skies. I don't like that term. I think that's an astronomical Mm -hmm. for It's for astronomers. What we're looking at is dark Mm -hmm. water, dark earth. 
is what we really mm -hmm. want. And we want bright stars filled with sky, uh, bright skies filled with stars. So we want, mm -hmm. it's actually the wrong term. But um, I feel like LEDs have, you know, taken the, 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 the issue and really, they, they, we used to have HPS, which was warm colored. And it wasn't, you know, um, so directional. Now we have these LED lights, which are so bright. And they're even at, you know, 50% less energy, they're still producing massive amounts of light at a color temperature, which is probably the worst. Has Hawaii, has the adoption of LEDs on the island uh, created a, more of a focus for people in your job on, on light pollution? Yeah, I think that for, for me, especially like right at this time, that's such a timely question because our city and county is, is, you know, upgrading, upgrading yeah, all sure. the, all the lights at, um, at like 48 or 49 parks around the island of Oahu, many of which are right on the beach, you know, or, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you're on the beach in Hawaii because the seabirds, you know, transit the island, the, mm. the fledglings that often get disoriented. And we can talk about that later, but they're upgrading lights for, um, you know, they're partnering with Noresco and they're, the lights are going to be more energy efficient. And so that's amazing. And that's, you know, obviously what we want is more energy efficient lights. But the thing that goes unnoticed is how shockingly bright those lights are. Mm -hmm. And um, a park near my house was the first park to get upgraded. Mm -hmm. And now when we're out, you know, playing pickleball or tennis at night, it's like high noon, you know, on the courts. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm seeing different species of insects come in. You know, I see the seabirds get like kind of trapped in the light and you can see them just flying right outside the edge of, of the, the throw of the light. Mm. And um, that's about to happen at 48 other parks. So we're, we're trying to work with them and come up, you know, with ways to at least shield the lights, dim the lights, you know, ha have them go off after a certain time. Well, I, I and and just before I throw it over to John here, I'm I'm just going to comment on that 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 word upgrade. I don't want to minimize the the societal benefits of energy efficiency. Okay, I, I of course. I'm, I'm on board 100%, and and John is the same way. Well, you know, same, yeah. we we believe that we need to reduce our energy consumption. The problem is that we're falling right into the Jevon paradox uh, trap, which is, you know what amount of light was there what color was it and was it sufficient right and if it was why are we tripling it why are we changing the color of it what justifies that and what we're encountering and 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 john will uh, you know when we just have these discussions is we're counting these these presuppositions that first of all whiter light is better than yellow light right and brighter is always better than not brighter and th those opposed to it must come up with all the scientific proof that the brighter and whiter is wrong rather than the brighter and whiter providing the scientific proof about why they everything should be brighter and whiter and so like we run into these walls where the utilities will say how dare you tell me that whiter and brighter is not better you prove that we're wrong and it should be the other way around because it wasn't whiter and it wasn't brighter before it was perfectly fine. You did this to save energy. I thought you were doing this to save energy. So why are you using too much LED energy? And why are you using it? Why are you changing the Kelvin temperature, Dr. Plantovich? And it, it always seems that we run up against that um, when I, we have I am, these conversations. I'm having that same experience right now, you know, and, and that just, I, I feel like there's something in our human brains that, you know, if we're lighting something, we, we just think, you know, brighter is better and, and Hey, brighter is better. And we get something that's more energy efficient. Let's just go. But there's, there just needs to be more, um, clearly more effort and understanding, um, shared with, with the public about the effects of that, because it, it can be just catastrophic. You know, I can share stories about that. It can be just so catastrophic. And if people knew that their bright white light at a bathroom that no one uses all night was killing baby turtles, they wouldn't be down for that. Like, and, and so mm. in, 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 in a way, like having turtles be distracted by lights has been a benefit in the Hawaiian islands because everyone loves baby turtles. Like mm. my friend calls them the gateway drug to conservation. 
And I feel yeah, like that's totally I think we true. need to get a little bit away from the turtles, though, too. And then I, 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 yeah. I'm going to give it over to John. But, I mean, yeah, the, everyone loves the turtles and, and that. But, I, yeah. you know, we got to be smarter than this, John Bullock. We have to be smarter than just turtles. <sighs> we only want to save yes. the cute animals. Yeah, we only want to save. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I know that. I, a, a, a friend, a, a, okay, okay. Here's the, here's the problem. A friend of mine uh, worked for a company that um, did uh, intensive chicken rearing, so they they they, they design chicken farms and a fantastic LED lighting, absolutely wonderful. Um, but it was intensive chicken rearing, which kind of had a bit of a dark side to it. Mm -hmm. um, and on their website, because they thought that they were doing you know good environmental stuff, they put a picture of a panda which is panda's got nothing to do you excuse me. okay world wildlife fund we get it but i said i said i i think you're sending out mixed messages here you know this is this is not it but we are because we like okay turtles are not fluffy but they are small and cute and so small and cute or big and fluffy is the sort of thing that that apparently the marketeers will say that's what we need to do to get in front of people in the meantime, uh, in exactly the same as program that, that you've got going on on, uh, on Hawaii there, well, we had our, our, our latest newsletter from our, from our council. And uh, what do they call it? Uh, an improvement. Uh, we're going to have lighting improvements through the county. Um, and I said to my partner, I said, what, what do you mean by, what do you understand by the word improvement? And she said, increase. I said, yes. that's it. So you improve it by you, by you, inc by you increase it. And no one will argue against that because the, because of, of that disconnect it has not been put especially together. people from the lighting yeah. industry and i think that's the number one problem John. it's the lighting yeah, well industry. yeah because because at the end of the day it's the lighting industry who's making these things and it's the lighting industry that wants to sell it personally and this is turning into a bit of a monologue i'm sorry about this um i think it's time for a moratorium uh, and I think it's I think it's a mm. I think it's a UN uh, position maybe because when we when we look when we look at at, at a precious eco eco uh, ecology uh, as in Hawaii where you can say how how quickly can that damage be done and it's almost you could do it in a in a season bang and it's gone mm. now if that is the case then we need somebody bigger and better than the local government of the island. Because they're already being sold the story by the efficient lighting manufacturers, but if we can have the United Nations saying, "Actually, we want to st we want you to stop this," because there's something else happening here that and that is not broken through. That argument is not broken through. And the lovely thing in your in in your description, Sheldon, was that you know the community-based restoration efforts, and so many times on on these podcasts. Mm -hmm. It comes down to the, the local community trying to do something and uh, kicking, pushing back mm. against the, 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 the big numbers that says, well, if we do this, we're going to save so much money, but we lose so much quality. Now, I'm sorry, that was a, that was a bit of a rant from my part, and there should have been a question on the end of that. Um, but so, so, <laughs> I, I've never been to Hawaii. I, 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 so I, all I've done, I, it's, I've only seen it, what's on the TV. I'm a long way away. No, it's, mm. I'm sorry about that. But in how here's 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 a here's a question really that how long has it been since before Hawaii would have had any lighting at night apart from in the absolute mm. sort of settlements you know in, in, because you know street lighting in the UK started in the 18th century you know mm. to stop people falling down holes in the ground but. In, in places like Hawaii, this is this is absolutely fresh. We were talking to a guy in uh, in Pakistan a few weeks ago, and again, it's basically a dark country, which the authorities would like to make brighter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, it, I, I mean, is, is, yeah. has, has Hawaii got that potential for for saying, "Whoa, stop it now! Let us do the extra research. Let us see what these other experts have got to say." And that that is exactly what we're testing right now. And, and so, you know, obviously the Hawaii, Hawaii is an archipelago, right? And we have the northwestern Hawaiian islands. Think like Midway, Curiatal, Laysan, the amazing island of Nihoa that you should look up and enjoy. Um, all of those islands are, you know, mostly uninhabited aside from Midway. But in the main islands, you know, the big island of Hawaii has a, an ordinance and um you know there's observatories there 
And so that most of that, the lighting there is, you know, um, very, very wildlife friendly. And Maui recently, there was a lawsuit involved, in, unfortunately, but recently also passed an ordinance for, um, I think it was street lighting. That's better. Kauai, Kauai is a little bit of a mess. Um, I don't even want to touch that one on this podcast, but Oahu is called the gathering place for a reason. It has more people than all the other islands combined, all the neighbor islands combined. And we have like Waikiki, of course, which is famous and lit up like a Christmas tree, you know, all the time. And so I mm-hmm. think that on the neighbor islands, some of these things have been start. We're starting to address some of these things or on the big islands already been addressed. But here on Oahu, it feels like this is the first time anyone's like really tried to tackle this. And I, I hate to say this um, because, you know, we, we have hundreds of volunteers who pick up down seabirds every year during seabird fallout season mm-hmm. where the seabirds are leaving their burrows and, you know, they're normally looking for the brightest horizon, the sky, you know, the stars, you know, reflecting off the ocean. And so they get disoriented by the lights. They, you know, just fly around them until they're exhausted and they either collide with something mm. or they just fall to the ground. And then of mm. course, all the introduced mammals that we brought, the feral cats and the mongooses and the rats eat them. Mm-hmm. And um, this has been going on forever. And we're, we're, you know, we all ramp up right before the fallout season, you know, we get the volunteers together and we pick up hundreds, sometimes thousands of birds, but there's been very little done regarding the lighting. However, within the past three years, for some reason that we don't totally understand, we've had this massive increase in sea turtle nesting. I know you all don't want to hear about sea turtles. It sounds like you're no, sick no, of no, about no. sea turtles. No, no, it's okay. Bring on the sea turtles. Bring on the sea turtles. <laughs> but for, uh, for us in the Hawaiian Islands, you know, we have the threatened green sea turtle, the Honu, and... Um, it's beloved, you know, by visitors and, and residents and native Hawaiians alike. And, you know, back at the turn of the century, there was commercial harvest and we ate them all. Yeah. And to the point where they used to nest throughout the entire chain up, up into the Northwestern islands and then the main islands. And uh, the harvest was so efficient and severe that there were after after the harvest ended because there was no turtles left and they were finally protected in 1978 they they were only nesting in one single place in the whole archipelago and that was french frigate shoals or lalo which is this you know eroding atoll with a bunch of islets that are like less than a meter above sea level and so, so since then, there's just been no nesting. Like our whole new here on Oahu, make the trip all the way to French Frigate Shoals to nest there. And over 95% of the population of Honu do that. And so something happened in 2020 and we went from having no nest or one nest or two nest. And we had 57 nests in, the, in 2020 and then 64 nests the next year. And we have this army of community volunteers and when they see Honu being distracted, the hatchlings being distracted, ending up in the road and getting run over, getting eaten alive by fire ants because they're disoriented, that has really gotten people into action. And so, you know, like I know Florida is way ahead of us, you know, but but this is new for us. And so I, I think that has been more of an impetus for us on Oahu to really do more work to try to rein in all the light pollution. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's uh, one of the things that, you know, I, I, I don't like is I don't like crude, violent action about things. I, 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 Mm -hmm. I believe in persuasion. I believe in convincing, but I don't think we have any real advocates, John, and I'm going to throw the question over to you. Uh, oh, to, I know you wanted to jump in there. Maybe back. It seems like most of the people that are, are connected to the government 
are not aware that this is an environmental issue in the first place. And this is why I joke on the show about going after Greta Thunberg. I'm going to get her money because for, for this movement, because I really believe that, you know, and, and, and climate change is a massive, diverse attempt with no solution. OK, in front of it, they don't have any solutions. But you know what? If you actually cared about climate change, which I'm not sure everyone that's in that movement does, which is another question. OK, whether they actually or they're, you know, they're issue riding the wave in you bought on the surfing. Mm-hmm. They, they write if you actually cared about climate change and environmental issues, the number th- one thing you would do is restore darkness because that is a would um, uh, save massive amounts of energy and wildlife and it would return our nights and so i believe that a lot of climate change money needs to be diverted over to this issue but dr plantovich people don't even know that this is an environmental issue how do you that's right uh, hawaii it has to happen on hawaii if it can't happen on hawaii i don't think it can happen anywhere i know right we're small you know we're mm. uh, we're isolated like we're we're all about ohana our family here Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the truth is, is that like, like people have no clue. Like you said, people are, comp- people here, there's so many people who are, um, they come here, they buy a house, they're not aware of the native wildlife. They light their house up for mm-hmm. security reasons, not knowing that there's, there's plenty of ways that you can have wildlife friendly lighting and still have all the light and security that you need correct mm-hmm. yeah for sure yes. and um yes and then the other thing is there's so many people who who there's no evidence there, that- there's actually no evidence that lighting your house up creates any more security at all like yeah all like, of those presumptions all of those things are presumptions and presuppositions that have very little evidence to prove that more light does not equal more safety that and and john will attest to this that it's hard to find evidence to prove that definitive evidence now we can change the type of crime that happens by shining more mm-hmm. lights on things we can change the type of criminal behavior but it doesn't produce less criminal behavior when you shine more lights on things it changes some of the yeah. behavior so yeah i mean just in front of my place here we had we had someone break into cars the other night i mean you know um parking lot that's lit up and we had it all on film and you know, they cut whatever they steal the car, they cover themselves. So you can, it doesn't matter. Right. Anyway, yes. um, you... so, go ahead. I was going to say, well, yeah, you, you provided them with the ability to steal the car because you lit it up. <laughs> if the car hadn't been lit, it would be much more difficult to steal it. Uh, but that's not, that's not, uh, that's not a selling proposition unfortunately no. and 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 we have this yeah we have yeah. this we have the knee jerk in the uk and i think it's it's everywhere that if you have night if you have violence at, particularly violence at night time uh, the answer is more lighting that and that's actually by precedent in the uk that that your courts have determined that there hasn't been enough light and so your oh, system yeah. is yeah. a precedent based system and so this is the legal issue regulatory issues are uh, in Canada, it's the same way. If there was a light there and you took it down, then now you've created a situation where you could be sued based on the removal of that light, right? Mm-hmm. And so we have a lot of different regulatory issues, which is why I think Hawaii is so important and why I think um, people like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service need to adopt light pollution as an environmental issue and well, talk about it like I, it's an environmental issue, Dr. Plantovich. I, I, th- I think we have to... To, to take this on and, and do, it, do it as a show me, um, we've got to be able to demonstrate that there are other ways of doing it. If, if, mm-hmm. if, the, if, if all the regulations that you look at all lean the same way, and then and here we are saying, but it's wrong. Listen, if there's a car accident the caused party. by lighting glare, so if you're coming yes. out of a tunnel and there's a car accident there and the car accident was caused because the LED lights were creating too much glare, too much of a contrast between the tunnel and outside, the answer would be put more lights. That, that's oh, hey, what the I answer would, would be. I, 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 would, I would claim that I, was stopped, I, I got a speeding ticket uh, a couple of weeks back because of the glare from the oncoming traffic because I couldn't yeah. see the speed limit sign. That's my, that's my defense. It's not a defense, but that's the truth of it. Yeah. So, but what we have, we come back to community. We, the, from my point of view, and I think from the lighting manufacturer's point of view, there is, and Michael will say this, there is business to be done here. Yep. Because if we just let the, if we just let the energy managers go on, then it's, it's, it's a, it's a slow drift to the bottom 
because you get cheaper equipment that is even more efficient, that is the even worse color. And that's the way it'll go because that's the number they're chasing. But in terms of being able to create that environment that we can all say, that actually this feels pretty good. Mm. And we are looking after the turtles and we're looking after all the, all the wildlife and the flora. That's a, that is a design criteria. That needs a design mm. standard. And, and, and in order for us to get there, it's almost like going to go to a small settlement somewhere around the island that, that, and you go, we could do some work here. Can we do some work here? Can we, go, can, mm. we, can we get some manufacturers to give us some light fittings for free so that we can just demonstrate what is the, you know, what the art of the possible is? Mm. And in that way, try and, try and get some leverage going with, with, the, um, with, with the authorities. The, the I, other yeah. thing, I, yeah, and I, li I really liked everything you said just then, especially about, you know, just, just having something where, where you're, you're in it and it's good for you, it feels good, and you know it's wildlife friendly. Like, that's where we want, that's where we want to get. Like, right now... Right now on Oahu, if you're leaving the South Shore and you're coming across, you know, up high where it's pitch black, you know, there's hardly anything up there. And then you start coming down towards Haleiwa, which is where I live. Um, from as soon as you can see the town, the most dominant um, characteristic in terms of lights are, are the stadium, the, the, the field for the high school, mm -hmm. which is yeah. often lit up. And, mm -hmm. um, and then also the athletic field, the other, that's a, that's a community park. And there are those really tall, really bright LED lights, um, very white, you know, more than 3,500 Kelvin, we've measured them. And, um, and those, those are really hard to address, right? Because you don't want students to not, you know, have, be able to have football practice or whatever, but, it seems like there would be a way to, you know, th those lights are on timers, but, but that's one of the challenges for us, right? Because when you were talking, I was thinking, you know, we could do that in Holly Eva where I live. Like we could, I could go around. There's not that many offensive lights other than the, the parks and the school. And I bet we could do that here with the exception of those giant fields. And I don't know what, this, what the solution There's is There's a big movement in the fields, yeah. The first is that they don't need to be on all night. It's, it's good for right. us to turn them off. So when you're playing a game, nobody has a problem with the game that's going on, but turn them off after the game is over. Um, totally. You know, it's, it, you, know this, you see stadiums lit up all night long all over, all over America, and I'm sure it's no different in, totally. in Hawaii. There's no reason for that mm -hmm. stadium lights to be on. Um, and, it, you know, it goes against the number one principle that everyone loves, which is the societal benefits of energy efficiency. Right. So mm -hmm. let's let's get these things under control. That's a very simple thing. But, you know, the you know, when you're talking about these small islands, I was just on in. I told you guys I separated my shoulder in Mexico. I was actually on Isla Mujeres, which is an island off the coast of Cancun. And there's probably I was kind of counting them when I was there. It's probably about 700 streetlights on the island. And. Maybe I would say that there's maybe four major hotels that are kind of small by Cancun or Florida standards, but they're on an island, so they're a bit big. You know, if you gave me like six million bucks, I could turn Isla Mujeres into a dark sky paradise. Okay? It's not that, and it could be an example. Like labor included, everything beautifully, well lit roads, everything. We'd have it all, we'd do it all perfect. And so these island examples are the best places because they're sealed off. The earth is round, right? Well, that's up for debate. Now, apparently, the earth is flat, but we, we, we know that the earth is round so that you, you actually lose the light pollution as you move away from the mainland, right? You actually have darker skies, right? So out in Hawaii, if you actually fixed Hawaii, you could show people that, hey, you know, it costs this much per mile of road or whatever it is. And we also mm -hmm. got the residents on board and we told them that their conspicuous consumption lights lighting up their home are not for security. They're actually for consumption. Consp you, want, you want to light your house up. And actually, we're going to change that by behavior by shaming people that do that. Not by congratul like <laughs> That's very simple. You could do that with an anonymous letter campaign, actually, on the island, where you sent people that Michael's, their Michael's a great up. fan of, of anonymous letters. Oh, anonymous letters are so powerful. Yeah, okay. The, they're, he doesn't believe me, but they actually are. <laughs> right? But, I mean, people are not lighting their houses up for security. That's a lie. 
they're lighting them up because they want to. They want their. They want everybody to see their big house in Oahu lit up. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. It doesn't so, help. So one. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that we we have done the letters made me think of it are you know when we started finding. Sorry to bring the sea turtles up again. Sea turtles, yeah, it's no, okay. Bring it. up the sea turtles. <laughs> Um, for us, it's new. We're like a kid in a candy shop. We're like, oh, we have nests. Um, but when we started finding them in 2020, you know, and, and we started to get a handle on the effects of lighting. You know, one thing we were really shocked about is, is we had five nests that were in a national wildlife refuge that's really dark. You know, mm -hmm. the whole refuge, thousands of acres. Um, but we we had those five nests all were disoriented. We could see the hatchling tracks going Malka or inland. And so we went out there at night and we could see up by the wind farm. That's like six miles away. There was one white crane light and it killed yeah. hundreds of hatchling sea turtles. Mm. It was like so devastating mm. to us. But, but regarding the letters, what I was going to say is, is now that we have a handle on things like that, when we find a nest, we stand there, we look around, we get down at sea turtle level, we see which lights are going to be problematic. And then we do write letters, you know, through not, not Fish and Wildlife Service, but with the nonprofit agencies I work with, like our nonprofit organizations I work with, like Malama Inahonu, we'll go ahead and we'll write a letter. We'll say, you know, you're so lucky you, your house is near a sea turtle nest if you want to Malama or care for it. Um, this is what you can do. And, and we have seen the community come out in droves to do that. So, but, but, you know, I don't want to have to send a letter to every terrible, you know, like, like offensive light around a sea turtle nest. I don't have time for that. Like our team doesn't have time for that. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little crazy making that we don't have a more holistic approach right now. Which is what we have to aim for. Of course, well, we have and, to, and, and hope this is a movement. This is a movement. Yeah, okay. That's well, what this and, and is, have, and it's disparate. Yes. Just let me just let me get this point. It's disparate right now. It's a disparate movement. It is okay, and so you have all sorts of different reasons why people are doing it. The original basis basis of this movement is astronomy. Okay, and so that's the International Dark Sky Association. It's a group of astronomers, mm -hmm. okay, that want to look at the stars. But this movement has so many more aspects aspects to it, which I think are far more important than looking through a telescope. I think people should be able to see the stars without a telescope, okay, which is how most of us would want to interact with stars in the first place. I hate to say this, but staring through a telescope is not that exciting. I've done it many times. Yeah. Okay. It's much nicer to lie on a dock or on a hill and look at a beautiful, endless sky of stars from horizon to horizon. That is far more, uh, I don't know, moving and spiritual than, oh, that's one of the moons of Jupiter? That little dot in there? Yeah, that little dot in there. That's a moon of <laughs> Jupiter. Wow, that's cool. But the stars are so much nicer just without knowing that that little dot in the middle of your telescope is a star. So we have to get away from the astronomy aspect of this and we have to turn it into an environmental issue. And it's the world's most solvable environmental issue, Sheldon. Uh, um, I'm interested in, in 2020 because a lot of us had a very interesting 2020 just staring at our walls. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm guessing that you had mm -hmm. no... Air, no flights. No, no. There was, there was no aircraft coming in. There was no boats. Very little activity and, going on out. And right before the season started, there was a ban on people going to the beach. So even residents weren't on the beach at the beginning of sea okay. turtle season that year. I'm I'm reading a book called <laughs> Islands of Abandonment, which is about post-human uh, activity. Uh, and it's it's a, it's a what what na when when nature strikes back. So basically, you stop doing things, and how quickly it it it, it uh, uh, things change. And 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 the, the the speed of change is is absolutely extraordinary. And and the uh, the author is, is was talking about during the Second World War in the North Sea between the UK and Europe, uh, there was very very little traffic because. The fish of the fishermen couldn't go out. There was no merchant, and the cod stocks, the fishing stocks in that stretch of water, exploded over that five years. And when you then say in one single year you go from the, we didn't have any sea turtles, 
And then all of a sudden we've got a lot of sea turtles and all we did was nothing at all. And that's, and you, you go, all right, so what? Well, that's, there's a clue in that. Mm -hmm. There's a clue in, in how we move forward. And that is, a, you know, the world, but, the, but part of that is to, is to, is to acknowledge that mm. we are part of the, we are part of nature. We are part of the living mm. world. We are not the living world. We are not the keepers of the living world. And we have to sort of take yeah. and share and, and open things up a little bit, which is not an easy argument at all. But the, the no. truth is that is and of course we've got the other the other issue in all of that is that it's a it's a food crisis issue now because we are we're we're, we're, lo we're losing um pollinators uh we're losing uh insects at a, at, a, at, a, at a, an astounding rate 90 percent of insects suddenly disappearing um and if we do not do something about this and this is comes wave this united nations flag again we're destroying the, the ability to to grow food for ourselves and if and, and maybe these are the kind of messages that we need to be taking onto yeah you know, if an island i'm sure that hawaii that the hawaii cannot feed itself i'm absolutely sure of that you you rely upon upon the the, the ships and the aircraft but the ability to be able to say we can be more robust in the way that we look after ourselves and to mm -hmm. do that, we have to look after the insects because without the insects, we can do nothing at all. Sorry, got a Michael. Lot to no, I just want to make sure uh, you had a lot of point. I saw you wanted to jump in. I want you to comment first on the rewilding, Dr. Plintovich, about this idea of how that happened in 2020. And then go wherever you want after yeah. that. But I saw you were really interested in <laughs> when he talked yeah. about the rewilding. Yeah, there were so many, so yeah. many good points. I'm bringing there, you back to that to, to like, start for me, if you can, if you don't mind. Yeah. Sure. Um, so yeah, so that was our initial thought in 2020. Um, I'm putting the timeline together right now for the manuscript we're, we're working on for this. And um, there's a couple of things that happened. So at the end of the 2019 season in October, their main nesting island at French Frigate Shoals or Lalo, way in the Northwest, was completely destroyed by hurricane Wallaka. And so right. turtles were not able to nest on that island. There's a couple of other very small um, ephemeral islets up there. And then there's Turn Island, which is um, just full of entanglement hazards and things left by the military and the Coast Guard. And I won't get into that. But um, so that was a big problem for the sea turtles you know, sea turtles don't nest every year. So not every turtle would have gone up there and found that the island was gone, you know, or, or had, or, and it was at the end of the season. So we don't expect that the turtles knew. And even if they knew, turtles are very sight faithful. They return to the areas where they were born. So you wouldn't still probably wouldn't expect them to go find other places to nest that quickly. So that's one thing that happened. Um, the other thing that happened is, you know, about 40 years ago, someone brought a bunch of hatchling sea turtles from French Frigate Shoals to Oahu and let them grow to be about a year old and then started releasing them. Mm -hmm. And then they started releasing offspring from captive turtles there. So it's about the right time for those turtles also to have reached maturity. Mm -hmm. So this is completely confounded as to what's happening. And I would love any insight you all have because you are, you're both obviously, you know, you picked up on that like straight away. So, so that's 2020, you know, and then by 2021, there were a lot of people back on the beach. There weren't a lot of tourists coming, but there were all, all of us folks that are residents, we were all over the beaches in 2021 and we had even more nests. Mm. And then last year, all the tourists were back. And last year our nests went down from 60 something in 21 to 31, which is still way more than nothing. Sure. But so 
it's yeah. weird. I, it's hard to know what's happening, right? Like most problems are a mixture of frailties and most successes combine into a whole bunch of different things as you, as you so eloquently laid out there that, you know, if we start investigating these things, you know, sometimes Mr. Antinatalist John Bullock is not always right, John, about it's not always, <laughs> sometimes there are other factors involved. But, um, you know, what, what I really? find interesting, yeah, what, what, I think, what I think would be super powerful for us humans, and I want to throw this at you, Sheldon, just as a, as a talking point maybe, is if we returned to being not a nocturnal species, if we just returned to living as diurnal species and allowing the night to be the night, and, and if we could do that, I, I think that would be so powerful as a, an environmental a, a, a benefit to the environment. So people, you don't need to light up Waikiki Beach all night long because everyone went home and went to bed. And I'm not saying that hospitals should be shut down and ambulances. Obviously, we need our critical infrastructure. But Walmart is not critical at 11 o'clock at night. And you know what I'm saying? We don't need the McDonald's drive through um, You know, and so if we return to being a diurnal species, I hate to, like, it sounds so weird to say that. Because we're not anymore. We're not a, night, a diurnal species anymore. But we were very recently. If we return to that, I think, do you think that would solve a lot of these issues that, you know, uh, that we have environmentally and, and, with, and with wildlife or, or kind of uh, the way we live is against wildlife? Would it, would it, would it solve that? Can, can I just tap yeah. something on the back of that? Can I just, to yes. one extent, are you seeing ecotourism in the islands? Ah. Mm. Because because those two things seem to go together. Very good question. Okay, I'm gonna answer that last question first. So so one of the things that came out of not having tourists around for two years in the Hawaiian Islands because of COVID was this realization by people who lived here that tourism was not benefiting Hawaii in any way. In fact, mm. it was the opposite. They're harassing wildlife. They're doing things that are illegal all the time. <laughs> you know, there's commercial activities that are beach parks. So that displaces local residents from, you know, being able to go surf at one of their favorite surf breaks because there's 20 people taking a, a lesson. And so there has been a push in this last year for um, more environmentally, socially responsible tourism here and so we're just starting to see a little bit of it you know i did mention we do a lot of community-based work um all over the you know pacific islands but especially here and in, in on oahu and we have seen for the first time large groups of people coming from the main the mainland you know the continent and They'll, they are partaking in these days where we're going out and we're planting like 500 native plants or something, you know, to like reestablish some species diversity in a coastal area. And so, so we are seeing a little bit more of that, but it is a tiny, tiny amount. And as someone who lives in the, one of the most popular tourist locations here in Haleiwa, it is... I, I mean, it is really heartbreaking to watch every day. Like in front of my house, people walking on the reef, you know, people like can't not try to put their baby on top of a basking sea turtle. They have to take a picture of themselves right next to a basking honu. Things like that are just rampant here and it's unsustainable for wildlife, you know, for sure. So that's the answer to that question. Thank um, you. Now, <laughs> back to the other question about let's be a diurnal species again. Oh my God. That's like a dream, right? Like, and mm. I, I like, I like that you bring it up because it's, it's like, say what you want, you know, um, like ask, ask, like, go ahead and, and just say what would be the most beneficial. I mean, it's just like saying reducing human population, like is, would be amazing also, right? Like having people have control over their reproduction so that they didn't have to have a bunch of babies, you know, if you're living in another country in the world beside the U S or, or Europe or whatever. But, um, I, I do think that that, that would solve a lot of problems, you know? And I think one thing that's important is like the light, the, the light at night, we can think of it as a form of habitat loss, you know, for, yes. for, for animals, yes. right? Yes. Like, and I think that that's, that that concept 
is not something that that people think about or understand or have it's it's not taught you know in any of my millions of classes i went through in school you know i think that's something that needs to be brought to the forefront it's like it's like having an area that was destroyed by fire mm -hmm. or having an area that was developed you know it's it's habitat loss and um you know i think i think some of those things like that if we can share those nuggets with the public and have 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 uh, messages that are really relatable and easy to understand i think that will help but you're right it is a movement it is disparate at this point there's little patches of us you know we're just getting ramped up here in the hawaiian islands you know we're ready to make some changes you know, here on Oahu. But like I said, the big island has already done that. You go over there, you see the Milky Way. You know, you get to tap mm. into that awe sure. that is innate in all of us humans when we look up at the sky and we see the Milky Way and we, we're just in awe of that. You don't see that on Oahu, especially, you know, on the South Shore where Waikiki is. You know, yeah. I, I the the diurnal thing, I, I think you, in my mind, you know, with the, the image of someone putting their diapered baby on a turtle. Look, I have four kids, okay? And, you know, I had I had my I had my children quite young and um you know, I was uh you know, and I I I was always aware that um my wife and I were always aware that not everybody wants to be around your kids actually. And I find that when, you know, I listen, I find like the people that are my age, I'm 45 now, maybe 35 to 45 that have kids, they think that they should be able to continue behaving the way be, they were when they were younger, but now they just have a kid with them, right? So I, I you know, and it's annoying. It's, it's one thing on a plane, I guess we all have to travel. But when I go to a restaurant, like I never brought my kids, probably because I couldn't afford it at the time, but I never brought my kids to super nice restaurants to sit on my knee and cry while you're trying to have your nice dinner. I didn't put my kids' diapered body on the on a on a turtle when I saw it to take a picture of it. I find like there's this element that of us of of a certain amount of, and I think it's a Western thing. I think it's you know sort of an, uh, this right to do everything and take a picture of it anytime I want, whenever I want. And I, I, that idea of, you know, going back to being a diur, diur, diurnal species, it's like living authentically to what you are. You know, l let the turtle be, man. It doesn't want your diapered baby on its back, yeah. okay? No. It doesn't want your diaper baby on its back. And I like these rules. Like in Mexico, you can go snorkeling, but you have to wear a life jacket. And you can only snorkel in the area where the, the boys are because we, there's no chance of you touching the coral there. And then everyone can enjoy it after. I really appreciate those kinds of things. And I think we need to enforce laws on people, especially foreigners that go to foreign countries, and think they can do whatever they want. I think those people should be charged by the police. We told you not to step in the coral. And you stupid Canadian. We wrote it in English for you in a Spanish-speaking country, <laughs> and you still did it. No, I'm serious. It's it's ridiculous to me. It's actually, true. Oh, yes. it's totally true. Uh, am, am, am I am I fantasizing on this one, uh, um, or is it? Do I, am I remembering truthfully that there have been legal cases that have been brought on behalf of other species? I'm not a big fan of that, of of you no, know, no, no, of, no, no, of giving no, rights, no, human rights to rivers no, and, and stuff I'm, like that. I'm but. not. I'm not suggesting. Uh, no, no. I'd like to. Uh, we should give river rights to rivers, and we should. Yeah, we should sure. give tur turtle rights to turtles. But we should also we part. We should. But, 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 but John, <laughs> but, all I'm saying is that there's a law about walking on coral in Mexico. Okay, you're not allowed to do it. Yeah. It's probably the same thing in Hawaii. And you know what? They should prosecute those people that do that there's a sign right here that says do not walk on the coral i guarantee you it's written everywhere okay yeah i know and i know but you are you are looking for enlightenment you are looking for the human darkenment. community to, to the, the, and darkenment we, we thank you you're looking for the for the human community to go maybe we should stop doing this and for everybody to go you're absolutely right we should stop doing this let's put some english signs up for the canadians who are coming here yes to remind them that they should not be doing this but to get to that place sometimes, and you use the word advocacy right at the start of this conversation, mm. perhaps we need that advocacy to take a formal position and to say, what, you, what we are currently doing on this island, in this world, what we're currently doing on this island is that we are destroying a species. And that cannot hold. 
that this this species has got as much right to life as anyone else. But the mm. work that, the, the, but what we're doing at the moment, to bring it to the courts. Let them act, mm -hmm. let them argue that we don't care sure. about turtles. Sure. Yeah. You know? And if and if that if that helps in that journey to 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 awaken consciousness, hey, us woke people here, we're all woke people here. I trust. You know, because we go, yeah. What's the point of being stupid? You know, I'm not. I'm not yeah. taking on that woke word. You can keep that for yourself. <laughs> I'm not taking that on, but I'll. I'll throw it over to Sheldon. Like, what, what do you think about? Do we need the carrot and the stick, Sheldon? Do we need the, the the carrot, which is that you know we all treasure our environment, but we also need that stick. Where, hey, this this Hawaiian guy just wrote you a ticket for four hundred dollars, buddy. You got to pay it before you leave yeah. the airport. I mean, here here's here's my my perspective from Pacific Islands. Here we have um, tons of super rich people that come from other countries or from, you know, the continental U.S., buy up land, um, buy houses, do, do illegal vacation rentals, have tons of money and displace residents and Native Hawaiians who are living and working in the community. and pushing people into homelessness, right? And so we have so much homelessness, just even around like my house right now, so much. And I think that, that for people who are worried about where their next meal is coming from, people who don't know where they're gonna sleep, you know, um, in combination with, uh, people who think that they can do whatever they want because they have money. I just think that it's impossible to not use the stick at some point. And so for us here in the Hawaiian Islands, the stick is um, often doe care. So it's our DLNR um, conservation officers that mm -hmm. are chronically underfunded and are getting you know, I'd guess a thousand reports a day of people doing, you know, camping illegally, illegal, illegal nets, harassing wildlife, walking on the reef. And so the only time that they're able to respond is if it's, if it's, you know, one of their priorities, which typically is endangered species, that's a, a priority and some other things, but, but that was one of the discussions that I mentioned when when we all saw what it was like without tourists and then the tourists come back and we see all this poor behavior again. We're like, why don't we use some of this money that these tourists are spending and put them in, put it into doe care, put it into, you know, I, I, ways. I, I think your doe care could be self-funding. I don't think it needs any totally. more money. Yeah. I, I, I think what you need is hand, like, listen, what you, in Toronto, here in Toronto, okay, they, they separated years ago, they separated parking enforcement from policing, okay? And I also believe, okay. if you look at the United States, that cars and cops equals people getting killed in the United States for some reason. You, like, I would say it's like a, a huge percentage of police violence involves cars, Someone's in a car, cop comes up to them. So why don't we stop having, not pulling over people for speeding, but random, like these sorts of things, okay? So separate. So now you have a wonderful job where I'm sure there's tons of people in Hawaii that don't have a job or would like a job for the government where you get a pension and you get health care and you get all these wonderful things. And what you do is you walk around the beach and you hand out tickets to people that are not behaving correctly. OK, and you, you know what? Well, you will pay you a commission. Actually, you can you don't even have to get paid. You can have 10 percent. And I'm sure that there's tons of people that would walk around and say, see that sign? It says no turtle nest. There's no exceptions. And you know what? We don't have to teach you to be not ignorant of our laws before you get here. This is how we teach you. And you can't get on a plane in Hawaii now anymore because i have your driver's license without paying this six hundred dollars oh six hundred dollars is too much you just flow to hawaii sucker you got the <laughs> six hundred bucks get your american express out i'm not kidding you i i'm I, there's no enforcement the environmental laws in ontario they're a complete joke there is absolutely tons of regulation with zero enforcement zero enforcement wow you know I, 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 I we need to enforce these things 
and 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 hit the, these tourists yeah. with their selfies and all. I mean, look at I'm a tourist. I was just a tourist last week. Okay, just last week, and I broke my shoulder. But you know what? I mean, there there should be people that say, "Sorry, man, you just flew to Mexico. You can't get on a plane now in Mexico unless you pay this thousand dollars U.S. for your environmental damage that you did." That you know now we got to pay to fix it up. It would change. So, uh, you need the carrot and the stick, Sheldon. The carrot. I, and the stick. I agree, and and to hear that there's like no environmental enforcement in Ontario surprises me for some reason. Tell me more about that. Well, I mean, the the, the first of all, the Ministry of the Environment, you, you can't even get them on the phone. So, for example, that's how it, that's how it is here. <laughs> like you, you you can call up, you can call the police department, and a police officer will answer you. And you could say like, hey, there's a crime going on over there. I'll tell you to call 911 and someone will answer you and they'll send a police cruiser over there. You call the Ministry of the Environment wow. and tell them that somebody is dumping PCB ballast in the landfill over there. No one will respond to that. You'll never be able to get anybody. God. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. For it, sure. This is Try just it. like Hawaii. Try it's it. It's the same. Well, well, listen, these, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I, I, and I, I know that you know a lot of America is broken up into Democrats and Republicans. This is a non-political issue, darkness restoration. It yeah. doesn't belong to any political party. Okay, Agreed. I'm going to say it right now. Hunt the hunters and the trappers can lay down with the environmentalists, and we can all get together and fix this. But my my issue with this is that there's a lot of people who talk a lot about environmental issues on one particular mm -hmm. side of the spectrum, but do nothing mm -hmm. about it. Okay, except yeah. talk. All right, and uh, yeah, what I want is clean energy right now, so I can use as much of it as mm -hmm. I want, and I want a beautiful mm -hmm. sky filled with stars. And I want that every night because that's my human heritage and that's my right as mm -hmm. a human. And I want to pass that on to my children, actually. And I mm -hmm. need you, Ministry of the Environment, the, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency of Ohio and the United States in Hawaii. I need you to start doing your job. No more. We've mm -hmm. tried nothing and we're out of ideas. Because you already mm -hmm. have the laws. It's the same thing when you, mm -hmm. I, I could go on and on, I'm beefing here, but it's the same thing when you go to the airport and you say, why do I have to wait in line for an hour and a half when I'm coming back to my own country? I live here. Here's mm -hmm. my passport. Oh, no, we need to come up with a new system where we scan your iris. No, you don't. This is my passport. <laughs> it says I'm Canadian. You need to open the damn gates and let me into my own country. OK, mm -hmm. like they, there's all this. No, no, no. We can't do anything because we don't have the tools. We don't have the tools. I don't buy that for one mm -hmm. second, Sheldon. I think they've mm -hmm. tried nothing mm -hmm. and they're out of ideas and they need new leadership in these departments because there's tons mm -hmm. of things they could do to improve the environment of Hawaii. And sorry, there's my rant. Mm -hmm. But I, it's the same thing in Ontario. They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't do anything. Sorry. There. Yeah. No, no, I totally get it. Yeah. And and. You know, as you're saying that, a lot of those things I, I really agree with and, and like your your kind of outrage about it. Like, you know, I feel like that sadly, like daily about a lot of different things, you know, related to the environment here in the Hawaiian Islands. You know, I look out of my I can you know, I can see out right now to the ocean. I'm lucky enough to do that. And I don't see one native plant. You know, it's just like constant, you know, just there's just been so much degradation in the Hawaiian Islands. We've lost, you know, so many species and and um, it, it's just brutal. And and, you know, in terms of the, the lighting issue, I feel I feel like that's something that people, you know, that I work with at, at like DLNR or other folks at Fish and Wildlife Service, they're donate they're just giving their lives to these to these species you know just trying to protect them like these are people that we've all devoted our lives to conservation you know and and so the lighting aspect is a newer aspect and as people have become more aware of it they are trying to do things about it you know and so we're, like we're trying to hire a uh a, a university of hawaii professor who would be researching, tackling this, and potentially also someone who can work with the government to try to, you know, establish an ordinance for this. And while we're doing that, we have our community-based groups that are reaching out to individual people. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because here's, here's what the cycle that I see, and I've done a lot of podcasts on a lot of different lighting issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to tell you there's a cycle. The cycle is this. There's a government agency that's in charge of something. And they spend millions and millions and maybe billions of dollars, okay? And nothing changes. 
And you know right. what? It doesn't. And they have the. I I don't know if it's the system, the way it works, if it's globalist conspiracies, or I don't know. Okay, I don't know mm -hmm, what the heck mm -hmm. it is, but it comes down mm -hmm. to the community-based support that John was saying earlier, and that you have in your bio here. Okay, mm -hmm. you need to listeners to this in your local community. Every single U.S. county has a light pollution ordinance on the books. Almost every mm -hmm. single one. Now it may be mm -hmm. forty years old. Okay, you may have Ours to go is. to the clerk. <laughs> you may have to go to the clerk and pull that out and mm -hmm. blow the damn dust off of it because it's this thick. But you know what? That's an enforceable. It's an ordinance, so it's somewhat enforceable. You can use that. You then need to. We talk have to, we have found that for Honolulu just but it just it just talks about shielding that's all it talks about well then you know what tell people they can't have that light fixture because it's not shielded okay we don't that's need the perfect to be the enemy of the for. that's right and you got to get those and he starts with find your local newspaper and have them start reporting on light pollution issues help them become a correspondent for them write stories for them about how lighting pollution and name the the politicians that are in charge name them and put their damn pictures in the newspaper whether they're on team republican or team democrat or labor or conservative over there in the uk mm -hmm. they're all rats look the whole ship I'm, and i could go on and on with this i'm telling you n get your local newspapers to start reporting on light pollution crimes start reporting on this sort of stuff and name the politicians in charge and once they start seeing their picture in the paper OK, and they're not used to it. And mm -hmm. it's got a big headline. Uh, local Waikiki government fails again on light pollution issues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and start telling yeah. the public about it on social media. We've never had more tools. They will act so fast, Sheldon, it'll make your head spin. Embarrass them. Yeah. Shame those politicians, Wh whatever party they're part of. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Get them moving. Oh, we're, we're all I'm democratic gonna... here in Hawaii. Are you? Okay. <laughs> well, then they, they get your acts together. You guys are supposed to be the environmental party. But here, but here's the thing. What I'm saying is that, <laughs> that what I'm saying is that team Democrat, team Republican, team conservative, team labor, whatever it is, team in Canada, it's liberal or conservative or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. All that stuff doesn't mean anything. If you can't see the stars, mm -hmm. if you don't have a beautiful environment, if you don't have clean water. I know Hawaii mm -hmm. doesn't have clean water. Apparently there's some clean water problems in Hawaii. It's oh my God. Let's gasoline talk in the water right and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Like I was reading it, this article. It's like clean air, clean water, beautiful skies. Yeah. These are not a political issue at all. What we need mm -hmm. is our politicians to enforce the regulations and ordinances they already have on the books. John Bullock. Thank you. I'm going to come right the way back to where we started because I'm, I'm just looking at the time now. Yeah. Um, we've oh, yeah. got to demonstrate what it needs to look like. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that we have got with politicians is that they don't understand. Why should they understand? They're professional politicians. They, 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 they've, they have got their agenda. That's why they're there. When we start talking about environmental problems, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, uh, the, they can all turn, turn around and go, yeah, but what else can you do? What else can we do? And unless we can actually turn around, we can do this. We can do this. We've made this for you so that you can see a better way of doing mm. things. Now, if you accept that this is a better way of doing it, mm. why can't we have this everywhere? And then you can start to build that consensus out of the, well, we, did, we never thought about that. No one ever told us we could. No one that we've spoken to has ever said we could do this. You need solutions. But, you, Agreed. but you've got to yeah. have this to show them. And I think it, that, com we that have community that. initiative. We have that but in the have, Hawaiian Islands on the big on the Big Island, right? Yeah, on but, the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, but, that is has but, its ordinance. But you need to translate into where, wherever you are, wherever you right. are, you need to be able to say, right, just walk down that street, see what happened down that street, have a look at where, where that promenade goes along. I'm going to I'm going to encourage look the listeners. We've done there. I'm going to encourage listeners, John, John, what John said. There's lots of dark sky friendly cities, Lac Megantic in mm -hmm. Quebec. You have Flagstaff, Arizona. Those examples exist. And you sent me the one about the Moors in, 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 uh, in, in England. In Yorkshire. Okay. Yeah. And you have the ordinance on the books. What we need is people of courage and passion and, and to, to speak mm -hmm. out and avoid the trap of politics. Do not buy mm -hmm. into the divisive nature that happens in all countries where they grab you and they get you on Team Hillary Clinton or Team Boris Johnson or Team Pierre trudeau and now you work for their damn ego no get to your local community pull those ordinances out and let's get some lights shut off for the turtles or for yourself or for the view of the stars or whatever reason you yeah. want 
and encourage your local leaders. And if they don't do it, start shaming them in the local newspapers because that's the only way to do it, Sheldon. I'm telling you. Yeah. And you will, and you will find no, that I there think... will be creative people who will come and, and support you. There, mm -hmm. there will be light. We've already designers, found example. that. Yeah, <laughs> we've already crack on then. We... Crack yeah, on. we already have. We already have some nonprofits working with us, and um, you know, like I said, we're sort of we're sort of gaining momentum right now, and you know, we're hopefully meeting with city and county here soon to talk about their upgrades, and then we also have a meeting with Department of Transportation to talk about street lighting. Mm -hmm. So we are we do finally have some momentum, and like I said, this wasn't even on my radar, you know, two years ago, really, this lighting yeah. thing. So. It, it is we we are like kind of reaching a critical mass here in the hawaiian islands but oh, it is nice so to be awesome. able to have other examples you know like when we look out at the rest of the world and it's nice to have other examples and to talk to you all who you know have been doing this longer than we have and have ideas and i really appreciate all of those yeah i appreciate it as well, well and, and and you know i'll just say uh we've got, we've spoken for almost an hour, over an hour can you believe it yeah uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> i could talk to you guys you know, forever but i need another double <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could use one of those as well. You know, but you know, I, I think that, um, and we're going to get some final thoughts uh, from you in one second. But you know, uh, I, I'd, Hawaii would be such an amazing example. It's both big enough and small enough, and it's part of the U.S. And you know, mm -hmm. it uh, you don't have light pollution that much around Hawaii, so you could really establish something special there. And I'd love to see it mm -hmm. happen. Dr. Sheldon Plintovich, do you have any final comments for the Restoring Darkness listeners? Yeah, I just feel like this is this is something that, you know, uh, this, you know, light pollution is something that people aren't that aware of. There needs to be more outreach, more education, more action. You know, it's not going to happen as fast or it isn't happening as fast as we want in terms of darkening the night sky or um, reducing artificial light from the night sky. But if we all work together, you know, and, and we're able to enlist the community, enlist politicians, enlist journalists, then I think we can make a difference. I think we can. And, and you know, John may not like my anonymous letters, but you know what? Why don't you give one a try? All you listeners <laughs> out there. Give one a try. I mean, you know what? He said, said that guy, the ostentatious, ostentatious guy in the mountain with the bright light, send him an anonymous letter and tell him uh, some concerned citizens yeah. in his neighborhood don't like his lights and see what he does. I bet we, you. We actually tracked well, We actually <laughs> tracked that person down up in the mountains and told them to turn their light off. Yeah, but it, <laughs> so but what did. I'm saying, my suggestion, I, I thank you, Dr. <laughs> Plentovich, but she, my suggestion is that it, anonymous drives people cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And so when they know that other people are watching them and you give them one specific mm -hmm. thing that you want them to do and they, they'll be very scared not to do it because they don't know who it is. They don't know because when it's Dr. Sheldon Plant, they may think that lady, she doesn't look so tough to me. But if you send them an anonymous letter, they don't know who it is. It drives people crazy. They turn their lights off right away. Trust me, I've done it dozens and dozens of times in my rural community. And I even did it to a corporation who put their lights on a timer and now their lights are off at 11 o'clock. So the anonymous wow. letter is very, very effective especially if you don't know the person. So give it a try. But if you, but listen, we can't, and I'm just going on here, but I love, cause I love this part. We can't say complain without trying anything. We can't be, I tried oh, nothing yeah. and I'm no out way. of ideas folks. So yeah. check out Dr. Plantovich is social media at Sheldon, uh, Shell, uh Oh, Shell door of the hill people. That's a tough one. <laughs> We're going to have it on the Restoring Darkness podcast website along with um, the website for uh, Fish and Wildlife Service .gov program slash coastal. It'll be all there. You can click it there. For, all, for, all, for, for everyone else there, thanks for listening. I know this was a long one, but we, we had fun. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Bye for now. Look no further for dark sky friendly products than Evluma. Since its first product launch, Evluma has carried one or more International Dark Sky Association certified models. Your customer cares about light pollution. Suggest the Omnimax with shielding or the Area Max with full cutoff to reduce uplight and glare. Evluma, illuminating the pursuit of darkness.